This NFC South win totals and preview edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by MyBookie.ag. Sports are back, and MyBookie is now offering a 100% deposit bonus when you use the promo code SGP. That's MyBookie.ag promo code SGP to play, win, and get paid. We're also brought to you by the leaders in daily fantasy, DraftKings. Download the DraftKings app now and use promo code SGP to claim your share of $100 million in instant giveaways and put yourself in the running for the $1 million cash prize. That's promo code SGP to get your share of $100 million in prizes only at DraftKings. We're also brought to you by BetQL. Want to get an advantage over the sports book with NBA, NHL, and MLB back in action? You need to download BetQL, the only app you'll need to make smart bets this season. Head to betql.co and enter code SGP20 for 20% off your first subscription. That's betql.co, promo code SGP20. We're also brought to you by Ace Per Head. Ace is the leader in paperhead providers, and they make it super easy to start your own sportsbook. Plus, Ace is offering up to six weeks free over at aceperhead.com slash SGP. That's aceperhead.com slash SGP. Finally, do not forget to sign up for the free roll football contest. We're giving away up to $5,000 for the best NFL handicappers this season. Sign up today over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash contest. Ooh, welcome everyone to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer Dog? Hello, Sean. Hello. What's well, happening? We're talking football. We're, we're talking football. We're, we're still talking NFL. It's August. It doesn't feel like August 25th. It doesn't feel like we're getting ready to watch the third episode of Hard Knocks here tonight, and, Tuesday, and, the 25th. And I didn't think I, I didn't realize how much I would miss preseason football until there was no preseason football. My my football juices usually get that nice endorphin rush in August. And uh, now it's just going to be uh, like a dam. It's just going to burst. My love of football is going to drown the villagers as the dam overflows. I've been pent up for so long. Well, the, there's plenty of analogies there, Sean. Like a <laughs> sailor coming back from a long. Exactly. I, I, I mean, we were talking about this before the show. Like Stan's dad in South Park. It doesn't feel like football. Or Randy, Randy, <laughs> Randy Marsh, Randy Marsh, all-time yeah. goat. Uh, we're going to be talking about a couple of goats today, I think. Uh, but yeah, no, we were talking about this before the show that the, the, it just feels like it doesn't feel like it's football time. Yeah. Like it doesn't feel like everyone's back. It doesn't feel like everyone's focused on football because the only other shitty thing going on is baseball this year because of this, <laughs> uh, this, this really long shitty thing that prevented all the other things from happening. Now everything is happening right now. And a little bit, I feel like the kid who has the birthday on Christmas. It's never about my fucking birthday. That's where we are with the NFL right now, which I worry isn't going to change until what do you think? The weekend before I everyone's think, done their maybe, fantasy draft. Maybe the tsunami will hit once people start drafting their fantasy yeah. teams. Once they realize Labor Day weekend, right? it is happening. I, I think sports fans right now we're almost like jaded lovers. We're it works. We don't want to get hurt again. So we don't, <laughs> if we buy into this fact that football is happening, you saw the COVID test results zeros across the board for the players. They've done an amazing job. I mean, there's plenty of times to kill the NFL, but so far knock on wood, if you're with me, they've done a great job of, of tamping this down and hopefully it stays that way. But I, I think once people draft their fantasy football teams, then the, the light will really get switched. And we're here. We're talking NFC South. Couple quick things, of course. Make sure you sign up for the free roll football contest. It's free. Yeah. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash contest. Trying to give away up to five thousand dollars with our pals over at BetSports. No, we aren't trying to. We are giving away five. We let, let's let's speak it into reality. Again, uh maybe Sean is setting the bar low because he's turned into a soft millennial well, we need- who thinks Joe Judge is too strong on his players. <laughs> well, I'm gonna I'm going to invoke that same level of strength in my voice and my message to you, the listener. We're giving away money. And the more people that sign up, the more money that's in the pot. It's very simple. It's just so that easy. So make sure you tell a friend, tell 10 friends, and get them signed up to the free roll football contest. But it's important to let them know subscribers, members only. Yes. Subscribers only. So make sure to inform them of the DGEN's only lifestyle. Subscribe for them the podcast on on the on the phone at least our podcast. But yeah. if, if you're feeling generous, subscribe to all of the podcasts. On and the there's Sports a ton Gambling of podcast there's network. a ton of podcasts. And speaking of that, we uh, 
worked up a little survey just oh. to see where DJ and only are at, what you guys like, uh, what your favorite parts are, what you, if you have any suggestions, uh, <laughs> sports gambling podcast.com slash contest, fill that out and send it in. We're going to pick uh, one person to win $500 cash from doing the surveys. And of course, one person's suggestion was no more stories about me winning $200,000. Yep. Well, I have news for you. When I win $1 million <laughs> in the DraftKings Millionaire Maker, then yeah. you're never going to hear the end of that. So you're right. There's no more 200K small winnings. I'm winning it all this year. Well, and I, I think, I you know, the, the other the other big takeaway for me is, you know, may, maybe we have to have another uh, HR moment with Colby, Pick Dundee, <laughs> AKA the Dantabase Dan. Uh, his offensive language. <laughs> Imagine, imagine a world where you're offending DJs with your language. It it Please. takes a it takes some strong language to offend some DJs. You know what DJs aren't offended by? Online sportsbooks, ones that have great customer support, <laughs> easy de- <laughs> depositing and withdrawing, thanks to sweet sweet cryptocurrency. They're bringing back their NFL Super Contest. Hello. Pick five games against the spread hundreds of thousands of dollars in guaranteed prizes. And again, NBA action. Uh, I mean, we're, we're taping this while the nuggets look like they're going to eke out a victory against the jazz knock on wood. If you with me, (laughs) that feels like that's going to go to a series or become a series. OKC Houston. That's a series NBA playoffs heating up. Of course, we got a golf gambling podcast, get down on all these golf events and right around the corner out of nowhere comes the Kentucky Derby. (laughs) And yes, our boy Malcolm from across the pond will be calling in to give us the inside scoop. You might remember he dominated uh, giving out the tri box last time, or so maybe much. maybe the maybe the complete trifecta. Either way, that guy's the man, and so is my bookie.ag. Use that promo code SGP for a hundred percent deposit bonus. While you're there, make sure you play, win. Last but not least, get paid. Joining us on the line, host of the Three Dog Thursday podcast and the Big Fight Weekend podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network, and the Tampa Bay Bucks radio sideline reporter T.J. Reeves. T.J., how you feeling? Well, it's always good to be with you guys, and uh, let's just hope it looks like we're going to get there. That we get to some football. I'm excited with all of these previews. I've been listening, and now we're going to talk about the mighty NFC South. Yeah, it's a uh, it's kind of I, I would say maybe the most exciting division in football. Oh, this Sean, year. jokingly, we used to say the South previews were always the shit can of the, of the yeah. situation, both <laughs> AFC and <laughs> NFC. It's definitely not that way. And I was mentioning to Sean before the show, I felt like this was a, a exceptionally entertaining crop of teams with both high ceilings and low floors, uh, especially with your Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So yeah, are you saying it's the the NASCAR uh, South division between Tampa, <laughs> Atlanta, Charlotte, tobacco, guns? Uh, yeah, it's uh, but but yeah, I mean you look at you look at what on paper this division has, especially at the quarterback position. There's a there's a lot of reason to be excited uh, about these division games, and, and I know you'll get to TB12 here fairly quickly, boys. Yeah, I mean, let's just let's just get it going. TB12, of course, taking over in Tampa Bay. Have they officially figured out what his nickname is? Because there's <laughs> there's a million different variations, and I like joking about Tampa Tom or Tampa Brady or uh, or you know TB Tampa. Like, there's just so many different reiterate <laughs> like versions of TB going to TB. Is there one nickname that's standing out right now, TJ? I think I love the Tampa Bay from the very beginning. Uh, the TB 12 is like, like his, yeah. uh, but it fits because it's Tampa Bay uh, as well. And, and, and you didn't throw in the, uh, the Gronk and ears uh, oh, with yes. that either with Gronkowski who, by the way, for your audience, for whatever it's worth, I mean, we're getting limited access of being able to look at practice. This is across the NFL where you only get about 30 minutes where you can watch uh, for, for the parts that we're seeing Gronkowski looks tremendous right now. There had been, con- I'm talking about physically, there had been concerns. Is he underweight uh, because he had gone on and done some broadcasting, some WWE. He looks tremendous. <laughs> How many snaps can he play in a 16 game season? We don't know. Is he, is he going to be like a 50 play guy per game? Maybe 40 some games. Probably, 
but right now he looks great. And, and Brady, from a leadership standpoint, I've had a couple of different people say to me, one, one uh, let's say that's close to the coaching staff, another one that's been observing this team for 40 years and he's watching practice. He said now that the one that's been watching the practice uh, Buccaneers uh, in and out for 40 years and has been watching practices over and over again here in this training camp. Now you understand, he tells me, why New England won all of the time. When you look at this guy's preparation, Brady, we're talking about his leadership, how he's helping guys with be here, be there uh, in the offense, the alignment, the enthusiasm for his new teammates. He's like, this is what leadership is. Now you understand why they win, guys. And and Sean, uh, you know, I, I mentioned this to you before, but the Football Outsiders just this this is an analytical group of nerds. They went out of their way to slay Tom Brady, and I thought I would uh, I thought I would read a little bit a little expert excerpt from the uh, the chapter. Uh, as Brady begins the next chapter, he has plenty to prove that he can win without Bel- Bel- Bill Belichick, that he can compete into his mid forties, that he can lead a different team to the Super Bowl. But he has even more to sell: resistance bands, protein powders, recovery <laughs> pajamas, immunity <laughs> capsules. After all, he's more than a quarterback now. He's a pseudoscience pitchman, Gwyneth Paltrow in a football jersey. <laughs> sure, he could retire, spare his body another hundred or so hits, and focus on expanding his TB12 lifestyle business. But who wants to listen to a retired football player talk about exercise? Diet and nutrition. The longer he plays and plays at a high level, the easier it is for him to claim that his methods are truly extended his playing career. Every snap built his brain. Anyway, the point being, uh, they went out of his way to lean into this idea of like, I, I get it. Brady's a leader. Brady's a lot of things. Brady's also forty three. Gronk yep. is a lot yep. of things. Now I will say Gronk could be like the, uh, the two, the two comments on Gronk one could be like a fighter when a fighter goes to prison and then they become like a young uh, 38 or whatever. <laughs> yeah. They have those legs. And he then secondly, legs I had no concerns that Gronk was going to come into camp light. Cause when you go to the WWE, if anything, he probably hit a couple of cycles. Got got it going, and now he's back into football. Uh, cleanse. It, it, you don't state. see that very often. You go into <laughs> professional wrestling, and you end up losing weight. So you got you got Slim Gronk in there. I mean, really, the the thing that jumps out at you immediately is, of course, Jameis Winston last year threw thirty interceptions. Tom Brady threw way less than that. He only had oh eight interceptions. God. So if the Bucks can just get twenty two <laughs> less interceptions, they're they're unstoppable. Sean. Would Jameis Winston accounted for seven point three percent of all the interceptions thrown in the National Football League last year? Yes, <laughs> and, and they you're said so, you're telling wait 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 you're telling somebody something that I witnessed every one of those thirty from <laughs> field level last year. I, I you are imagine. not only preaching to the choir, you're preaching to the preacher's wife who goes home with the preacher. <laughs> and at Sean this will point, and, so. and Sean will tell you we it was much watch TV. We watched every minute. It felt like of the Buccaneers, whether it was. The watching the love affair of Peyton Barber for some goddamn reason, or or watching the magical <laughs> end of the season as Jameis Winston threw that just seventh pick six to in seal overtime. his thirty thirty season, the first one in three decades. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, Sean, they were a top five DVOA defense, and they gave up the fourth most points because he fucking threw seven field pick, position. Six, six sixes. And, and this really jumped out at me too because I was kind of. Er, I, we were hyping up the the Bucks last year because uh, I, I liked the I liked the coach I liked the team. We were on another win the and division. it was yeah it was if Jameis can just hold it together they can <laughs> win this division and of course he ended up not being able to hold it together but kind of a, a nugget that encapsulates their season teams um, with leads entering the fourth quarter win eighty three percent of the games <laughs> and yet Tampa Bay lost forty percent of the games <laughs> they led at halftime. <laughs> And a whopping forty five percent of the games they led entering the fourth quarter, and it's really just that turnover because their defense uh, is kind of coming on. They got a young, scrappy defense. What what are your uh, what are your thoughts so far, or looking to twenty twenty on the the Bucks defense? Well, that's that's obviously going to be exciting. One more note on that whole thing: you're talking to the guy that has to go into the post game live locker room show, or did? I mean, under the new twenty twenty crazy rules, there is no going into the locker room any longer. Uh, at least for now on doing that. And you don't know how many times where in the fourth quarter, you're standing there going, they're going to be able to pull this out. And then you watch another interception and go, I got to ask the same questions again about how did you blow it? Uh, lovely on, on the defensive front and promise me we get back to Brady's weapons now yeah. for the football outsider guys versus the Pinto. He was trying to drive in <laughs> new England last year. We'll get back to that. The defense. Here's what you need to know. Shaq Barrett back 
led the NFL in sacks, broke the Tampa Bay Warren Sapp single season sack record a year ago. Fantastic pass rusher. Also brought back the veteran inside in Dominican Sue, the former number two overall pick um, on a one year deal. He's hungry. He wants a ring. Uh, Buccaneers have two of the best linebackers tackling linebackers in all of the NFL second year, middle linebacker, Devin white from LSU, tremendous tackling machine and Levante David He's is good. the most under, he is the most underrated defender, maybe in all of the NFL. He has been fantastic while in witness protection guys for the last <laughs> eight or nine years of his career. So those guys are tackling machines. Uh, and I'll tell you who's having a good training camp right now, a rookie that they really like the son of the former NFL defensive back Antoine Ooh, yes. Winfield Antoine Winfield jr. Looks legit. Again, they're practicing against each other. There's not even preseason games, but the coaching staff high on this kid. He is starting right now with the first team defense at safety. Watch out for Antoine Winfield jr. Chip on his shoulder. Wasn't a first round pick second round pick. Um, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be very interesting that this defense, all they got to be is decent. If not good, if they're decent or good, the bucks have got a great chance to be an 11 or, win or 12 win team. Just don't cost Brady and the offense for a lot of the time this upcoming season. Yeah. And you'd imagine the defense is going to get much better as far as uh, where they're, you know, where, what they have to defend field position wise switching back over to the offense and all these weapons. I kind of think Godwin is going to be the guy as opposed to Evans or even Gronk. Mm. That's going to lead the, the targets, the touchdowns, whatever. Interesting note. I saw Godwin. Uh, he does most of his damage in the 10 to 19 yards range. That's kind of Brady's sweet spot. He doesn't air it out super deep as much, uh, as much as he used to. And Godwin was uh, third in the league last year in that 10 to 19 yard range was 619 yards. So I think that's kind of a Brady sweet spot. How do you see the uh, Brady was 27th last year in average uh, depth of target. So yeah. that's speaking to your point also real quick, let, let me get some nerd on here. Uh, if you compare the DR and DVOAs of Tom Brady and Jameis Winston last year for the second half of the season, it might be hard to differ differentiate them. So again, telling the story of the tail off to your point, he's got like TJ said, he had a Pinto. I love that yeah. you just called Julian Edelman a, a Pinto. <laughs> it's the perfect description of what Julian Edelman is. Now I have a visual of Julian Edelman driving in it's a Pinto. A Pinto with a face of Julian Edelman. And, and, and it, it tries really hard. And, it, it tries really hard, yeah. though. It does try to get up the hill and, and can. But I mean, there, there's no comparison. When you look at Evans and Godwin, both Pro Bowl receivers a year ago, both thousand yard guys. When you look at the tight ends, this is the best collective yeah. group of tight ends in the NFL. OJ Howard again appears to be a uh, reborn as as a great athletic big target here and they've got a tremendous pass catching tight end. He's not much of a blocker, but a tremendous pass catching tight end also in Cameron Braid who was great for Jameis Winston for years in the red zone on third down, uh goal to go situations. They love Cameron Braid. So Ronald Jones in the backfield, you sign Shady McCoy, how much tread left on the tires? Guys, it is no contest on the offensive weapons and the depth. You can uh, you can afford injury now, not that you want them, but if you have injury or this is going to be a factor in 2020, if you have positive COVID tests and guys can't play for a week or for 10 days or a couple of games, the Bucks have got depth at, at several different positions to be able to go to. Uh, again, new, new England fan can try to rationalize Patriot hater, Brady hater, football outsiders, uh, you know, <laughs> Joe Biden's campaign team, whoever wants to Whoever's throwing dirt uh, about, about the weapons that, that Brady had versus what he has now it's no contest. So at least on paper, uh, they look like a team that can put a lot of points up on the board. And the biggest thing is don't throw the ball to the other team. That's, yeah. you, you know, you guys are heavy into the numbers. I'll give you the number that stands out the biggest one in six against teams that finished with a winning record a year ago, the bucks were one and six against those teams in those seven games, Jameis Winston, 16 turnovers. Hello in the six losses. It, it's not that hard to connect the dots. Yeah. Board. Yeah. Their, their turnover margin was negative 13. So even if they can just get back to zero, that is a huge and, and, swing for this team. And that's probably how they absorb. I mean, I think the def I think there's a lot of narratives as to why the defense can progress, keep, continue to progress. But generally when, when de a defense goes from being bad to really good like this, they're going to go back a little bit towards the a little regression towards the mean there. But 
like you said, they, they were also quite unlucky. They were put in very bad situations. The the ball was handed to the other team many, many times by Jameis Winston. So I, I gotta be honest, Sean, I'm, I'm, I'm emotionally torn on what to do. Cause on one hand, Bruce Arians, legendary Virginia tech alum, eight paint. Uh, also, <laughs> Sean, I do have concerns, Tom Brady, Bruce Arians. They don't see eye to eye and everything. Again, I'm going to plagiarize one more time. Uh, they don't have the same view on hydration. Brady in his book, <laughs> the TV 12 method, reduce or eliminate your intake of caffeine, soda, and alcohol. All three can be dehydrating. Uh, Bruce Arians motto, win, lose, we booze. <laughs> is there any mention of, uh, is it acceptable to drink paint? I feel like that's probably not part of the TB 12 method. Uh, probably You're, not. And, and TJ kind of <laughs> hit it. Uh, the nail on the head there when he mentioned the the phrase on paper, and yeah. that's really the only thing that scares me about yeah. this Bucks team: the players, the coach, the situation. What I, could go wrong, Sean? I, I love it all, but we've seen every year in the NFL, there's always one team that kind of wins the off season, brings in the the big names, brings in a couple of free agents that is getting a lot of hype, and then ultimately, since the NFL is such a 53 man game, and and they never really live up to expectations and end up coming up a little short. What do you think is the the biggest thing that could kind of derail uh, the Bucks in their 2020 season? Well, I think you just hit on a couple of those. Uh, you know, one of them is obviously it's a tough division. Uh, you're also uh, slated to play the AFC West, which oh by the way, that's the Kansas City Chiefs yeah. coming in uh, for one of those games. Um, and, and oh, by the way, you also have the green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers on the schedule, as well as the Minnesota Vikings on the schedule as the North is another part of the point. So the schedule is not easy, never is in the NFL, but uh, it's, it's not like you drew the AFC South where you get to play the Jaguars. You had that last year uh, and, and get the easy win with that. Um, and, and look, it, it's anybody's guess whether Brady's arm his his elbow, his shoulder holds up. The belief is that it will be, and then, and then he'll be good to go. Uh, just one more trend here. We've talked about this all off season. You look at the recent historical tr uh, trends of uh, hall of fame to be quarterbacks, changing teams. Peyton Manning is the most recent one. And that first year in Denver, he struggled a little bit at the beginning, trying to get the feel back. He had had the neck surgery and the whole thing, but they, they ended up rocking and rolling. He had a fantastic first couple of seasons and went to the super bowl. You, you go back to Brett Favre. I know the one year in New York, when the Packers traded him to New York, uh, they did not make the playoffs. He was injured at the end of the year, the last two or three games. He had a, he had a rotator cuff problem, but they still had a winning season. It's not like they were three and 13 with the jets. The next year in Minnesota, they went to the, the NFC championship game. You go all the way back to Montana. And I know this is, I don't mean the state. I mean, Joe Montana going to the Kansas city chiefs. The first year they went all the way to the AFC championship game. All I am selling to you guys on the sports gambling podcast is there is some history on the side of a guy who's headed to the hall of fame, changing teams and have it lay out and have it work out for them in the first year or end or the first or, or second year. Let, let's see if the optimism turns into reality for the bucks. Uh, I mean, I'm ready to run through that wall for Br Mr. For coach, <laughs> coach, coach Arians. He, I, he's just, he's hey, just, you'll so love this. You'll love this. Uh, you love his one liners. I love getting to interview him before and after games. He started talking about Gronkowski in the heat, like on day two or day three. <laughs> and he started talking about Gronkowski in the new England heat. And you, you know, you may think you're practicing the heat. And then he says this Tampa heat, it'll get your ass. And it's got his ass right now. That's exactly what <laughs> well, you said. And we've, 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 we've kind of <laughs> talked about this, trying to figure out, will there be a home field advantage for these teams in the NFL season? Some places have fans, some don't yeah. some limited fans. And I do think there is something, I, you know, obviously Denver and the, and the Broncos, but even a kind of a secret advantage there of Miami, Jacksonville and Tampa Bay playing at home early. I think they're going to be in better condition and used to handling that heat. I mean, jumping ahead to the schedule, just real quick, Buccaneers, oh, 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 Buccaneers oh. at home against the Panthers week two, that game is going to be hot as hell. And uh, Panthers, if they're in the yep. all black jerseys, like that really does make a difference, especially in an off season where a lot of these guys weren't in their regular conditioning program. They they're in this weird ramp up program. They're not maybe in the regular football shape that they would expect. Uh, so yeah, I think that could be kind of a sneaky home field advantage. It's for them, the only home. Early. I mean, some teams, I guess, are going to have fans. We'll, we'll see what ends up happening there. But um, kind of all over the place right now. I mean, like is Tampa is Tampa going to have fans? 
for TJ. right now, the goal is yes, that in week two, they would have 25% capacity somewhere around 13, 14,000 in the 65,000 seat stadium. They would be allowed to have. And the hope, the hope is as the COVID numbers continue to go down, that you could maybe have 50%. You could get up to 25, 30,000 that could be at games. I know that's what numerous teams would like to have. Uh, for the home field. And you make a good point about Carolina. That's a new coaching staff too. Teddy Bridgewater's the new quarterback. Yes. He had success with new Orleans last year, including a game against the Buccaneers in that stretch where he replaced drew Brees because of Brees's uh, thumb injury. But uh, again, that's advantage Buccaneers in the heat with it, with a veteran laden team playing a first year coaching staff and Bridgewater with a new team in, in week number two. So uh, we, there are a lot of unknowns though, because I mean, as it stands, we're going to go play the new Orleans saints in new Orleans. There's no fans at that game that traditionally, as I like to call it, uh, Sean and Ryan is a four Advil game for me two before oh, the man, game and yeah. two after the game for 75,000 fans going berserk in the Superdome for four and a half hours, an hour before the game and three and a half hours during the game. So no fans at that first one in the Superdome. So this will be odd. And it's not going to be the same everywhere, at least for right now. We'll see what the league does because some coaches are already complaining. I know Sean McDermott in Buffalo, Mike Zimmer in Minnesota are saying, hey, what well, you know, whatever happened to the same for everybody here, either we should get to have a crowd or nobody gets to have a crowd. Uh, it's it's strange, but there there will be some games apparently at least in week one or week two where there are going to be some fans there. Does anybody honestly believe that Jerry Jones is not going to have fans <laughs> oh, at he's uh, gonna, AT&T Stadium? Yeah, he's going to have fans fifty thousand at, at the first game. They <laughs> might have fifty thousand there. That's going to be a far cry different. That seems that seems a little crazy, but that is a Jerry Jones Kramer. Let's get, let's well, get to let's the walk schedule. The schedule yeah. But I guess my one counterpoint to all of this is uh, a for for markets like Tampa. A reduced crowd of of just season ticket holders, perhaps when these teams come in from out of town, they're not losing uh, losing serve. And, and and two, Sean, what if what if the, the there's weirdness with not having a crowd and certain players can't get amped up and there's like a bizarro counter effect to not having a crowd and it becomes this weird home field for the teams that literally have no fans in the stands. Yeah, uh, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> There's so much to figure out in this weird First season. First four games at New Orleans as you point out, no fans. That's going to be creepy in that giant ass building. Then Carolina at home, at Denver, that's going to be a tough spot headed to ele- elevation and then back home to take on the Chargers. Uh, you know, I love their chances. I mean, Tampa has fared well in in New Orleans before early in the season. And uh, I think I think they probably go two and two here. I'm gonna say two and two here, this maybe is, three and one. This is weird because I could see them going four and zero. Oh. I could easily see them going two and two and having trouble with these road games. I think they. they I, I like their chances both home games though. I'll, at Denver is a, a loss for. In, for I, I think they'll sneak out one of those away games. I'm gonna go three and one. Look at you. Kramer Kramer is rubber stamping the Broncos. Do you still believe that Peyton Manning or John Elway is quarterbacking in Denver right now? You don't realize they've had three losing seasons in a row. Well, I don't think Peyton's walking through that door to help him. Uh, and he, I wouldn't just rubber stamp that game, Mr. Kramer. I'm not rubber stamping it, but I am. I am uh, I'm lower. I, I'm. You know what? I hope I'm giving Tom Brady the best. I, I hope he has a great season. Hope he has. He's he's, he's giving me two Super Bowl rings. What do you so. what do you got him going there, we TJ? First four. I mean, I I think it is a fair number to say ten wins, if not eleven. I think I think that's the expectation. I think anything under ten wins is disappointment. Eight or less is like failure. That, I mean, this this is how amped up Buccaneer fan is at this point with the change you made, with the upgrade you got at quarterback, with the defensive guys you have. The weapons you have on offense, uh, they're they're looking at being an 11 or 12 win team, win the division, get a buy on the opening weekend. Things that we haven't heard in over a decade. My twin daughters and Ryan, I know you got the daughters too. My twin daughters are 12 years old. The Buccaneers have not been in the playoffs since they've been <laughs> alive. So we got to be careful on the expectation, but I have to believe the expectation is an 11 or 12 so, win team. So so for those four first four games though. We we're just kind of breaking them up in chunks. Do you got them going three and one yeah. there, four and zero? Oh? It two and two at worst. Okay, I think three and one, and maybe even four and zero. Oh. And you mentioned they they won in New Orleans two years ago with Fitz Magic lighting them up. Jameis Winston's first win in the NFL 
was the second game of his career in New Orleans in 2015. So they've they've tasted not a lot of players still left on the roster from that win, but a lot of them were there two years ago for that win. And you're right, the Saints fuel off of that home crowd, and there's none for that opening game. It will be weird. Next okay. next four at Chicago on the short week, Green yeah. Bay at home, at Las yep. Vegas. And then at New York, what wow, tough stretch there? Three road games. That, that might be a two and two stretch in, in that one. That may be the one where you look at and say, are they gonna get three wins out of that group? I just, I don't, I don't foresee this team getting off to a slow start and being something like two and four, three and five. I think when they come out of the first eight, it's probably gonna be something like six and two or five and three, and it may even be better than that. Do not be surprised if they are rolling at the very beginning. And, it, and it's kind of like the jackrabbit mentality of go, go get a bunch of wins at the beginning of the year to help put yourself in position in December. Maybe if you do have injuries, let's not forget here for all the talk uh, about Evans and Godwin, they both finished the year on injured reserve. They both injured yeah. hamstrings in December last year and couldn't play. So you want to try to jackrabbit and get some wins early on to set yourself up I'll go, uh, in I'll December go, to be a 10, I'll, go, 11, 12, uh, I'll go three and one there. Although I am worried about Gronk in Las Vegas. So three and one Kramer <laughs> Gronk in Las Vegas is tricky. I'm going to go two and two uh, again, playing a little conservative, Sean next four at Carolina, the Rams. Oh, on you missed the, uh, at I'm home sorry. Saints the at home yeah. at Carolina Rams yep. Yep. on Monday night, Kansas city coming to town. What three home games, but none of them too easy. Uh, I'm Saints a, game a Sunday night, Rams game a Monday night, and the Kansas City game will be the national game on CBS with Jim Nance and Tony Romo. Uh, th that's because that's the game where the CBS lead crew will be in the stadium where they're going to play the Super Bowl uh, a few months later. All things being equal, in February in Tampa at Raymond James Stadium. So you think those are some marquee games in segment three? Potentially oh yeah, there? crazy. I think so. Yeah, so I would go. Uh, I would go two and two here. I think it's tough to get up for huge games back to back like that. So I'll go. I'll go two and two. They cool off a little bit in this four game stretch. Kramer, what do you got them doing there? I I think the uh, th this is a good section for the, of the schedule for them. I actually think they go three and one here. I think the uh, the weather maybe is a bit of an advantage in this part of the season. TJ, what do you, well, what do you got? Rams, and the Rams got to come all the way east, obviously, in that game. That's a tough spot. And, yeah. and look, again, we don't know if by November the Bucks can have more fans and maybe have 30,000 there. That's the hope later on in the year. I don't know that we'll ever get to the point in the 2020 season where you're going to have 75% capacity and you can expect to have 50, 60,000 fans at some of these stadiums. But for right now, the hope would be, could you, I mean, can you imagine Sunday night or Monday night with 40,000 there, if they could get 25, 30, 40,000 there to at least make some noise that's advantage Buccaneers. I like them something like three and one Sean, that. Nice. What's, the, what's the other, I don't have it in front of me. What's the other game in that stretch besides the three home games Car what's at, the other Carolina. One? At, at Carolina, Carolina. at Carolina. And again, that's a first year coaching staff and who knows, are they in the tank by that time uh, as a first year coaching staff? And uh, and and new players and that kind of stuff. They got rid of some players. Greg Olson not there anymore. Obviously, Cam not there anymore. Yeah. What happens Sean. to Carolina? Are they falling apart? I don't know. I Are got him. I got him going two and two. Two and two. Final four game stretch. Kramer, let's bring this bad boy home. What are the Bucks gonna do? They have a late bye week, so they haven't. They have a bye week week thirteen, which that could be good. That could be bad. It's okay. almost maybe too late. Minis coming out of the bye, they get Minnesota at home, at Atlanta, at Detroit on a Saturday, and then they close it out at home against Atlanta. And that's a t that's one I of those I'm Vikings, going two and two, Sean. That's one of those Vikings outdoor on the road games. I think that's a tough spot uh, for the Vikings actually. So I I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go three and one here. You know. And how about they don't. They don't play the Falcons the entire year yeah. and play them two of the last three it's games. Crazy. And of course, as you mentioned, the horrific end to the season last year on the pick six in overtime, the dirty birds always, always seem to screw things up in December for the Buccaneers, either home or away. So that'll be interesting for how it ends. Uh, but again, if you're the bucks, you may be in a really good scenario. You may be in a 10 or 11 win position coming into December. That would be a great scenario where maybe those last two games don't mean as much mm. for winning the division home field advantage. Are you resting Brady? Are you resting some players? Who knows? 
who knows as it unfolds, but the hope would be that you're already at something like 10 wins by the time, maybe even 11, by the time December gets there, there will be excitement that hasn't been in this market uh, in over a decade. Uh, if you can get to something like that. Now, remember this, this I, I keep saying this to people. It's hard because I'm getting old. It's hard for them to fathom that back at the turn of the century. Now I, I sound like a fogey at the start <laughs> of the two thousands, the, the bucks never lost and they never lost at home. They were constantly an 11 or 12 win team in nine, in 99, uh, 2000, 2001, 2002. There was a time at Raymond James stadium where they would win 10, 11, 12 games in a row over two or three seasons. You got to have that mentality. I think Brady is bringing that mentality. We believe we are going to be an 11, 12, 13 win team from the jump. We believe that we're going to be talking about home field advantage and resting players in the first week of December, because we've stocked up 10, 12 wins. That's gotta be the, the belief of the mentality you have. That's, that's how good becomes great guys. And so let's see if the bucks can make that transition from just being good to being great. Sean, uh, you, you got them going 11 and five. I got them going nine and seven. Of course, last year they went seven and Ooh. nine win total was six Ooh. and a half this year. The win totals nine and a half. I felt yeah. like I was being generous. This is a this might be a mega whale play oh, on the Ryan, under. Ryan liking fade, the under fade in Tampa Bay and I and, and honestly, uh, TJ gave us a lot of variance. I'm still doing the calculations, but I think <laughs> you had him going anywhere from 11 and five, 13 and three. So, so he's, he's TJ on the over loves as well. the over. Can they go? Can they go 18 and 0? I don't think they can go <laughs> 18 and 0 because you don't play 18 games. But the other the other thing is nine nine wins. So you have them scratching just to maybe get a wild card. Uh, that, I mean, that variable has to be that Brady doesn't play all 16 games. You got Brady getting hurt in there. To well, only win nine. Here's they what I'd say 10 when they rolled out of bed in new England. Craig. <laughs> here's what I hear. Here's what I'd say. Uh, he's not in new England. Bill Belichick is not in Tampa. And sometimes maybe he doesn't know how to drive a sports car. That's a manual transmission. Mm. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. He only Jameis is the SUV and now you got he like can a throw Porsche. to the Pinto up there in new England, <laughs> but he can't throw to the goddamn Ferraris that he's got down. Uh, you know, well, that's interesting. No, I, I would say, I would say it's the, it's the, when quarterbacks fall off the cliff, the cliff is steep. Bacon on the cliff, and then they're plus one forty-five to win the division, plus four fifty to the conference. Make? Yeah, sorry, an eight fifty for the Super Bowl. What's to make the make uh, the playoffs, playoffs is minus two forty-five to miss the playoffs, oh, plus no. one eighty. Oh. Uh, to me, I don't, I don't <laughs> see a ton of value in the futures. I'm just locking in the over. Uh, for I, me, Kramer, I'm hearing, any, like, I'm hearing some fucking music in my ears. Uh, <laughs> no Tom, playoffs, plus one eighty. Who's the backup? That's uh, a great Blaine question. Gabbert, the greatness of Blaine the Gabbert, Blaine who's runner. Been passed around like the offering plate at church, and he was with Bruce Arians in Arizona for a year or two. And Arians likes him. He was hurt last year on injured reserve with an injured shoulder, a non-throwing shoulder, injured in the preseason. So he is the he's the backup here uh, for the moment. So yeah, you got to see if you can nurse in some wins if you need it. Yeah, I, I would say uh, I, no. Uh, Blaine Gabbert is a man who knows how to find the back door. He's won us some money. Uh, but I would, I would be concerned if Brady, cause I don't think Brady like gets hurt is out for the season. I think he just is not that good now well, either, either will, will the defense could be good enough to carry it. The, the, the skilled position players around him could be good enough to carry it. And, and, and I, let and me, uh, let me leave you with something. I know we're wrapping it here in a moment. Let me leave you with something that I have said numerous times, numerous places. We'll say it again here on the sports gambling podcast. It is much more likely that the New England Patriots are bad, are really bad, than that than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers don't get to that eleventh, tenth, eleventh win. If you're talking about which is more likely and what we mm, want to put I odds like on, I like it. New e New England can easily be a four or five win team. Wow, Even love it. I mean, they can easily be a four or five win team and their fans are delusional to think you don't go <laughs> off the cliff when the hall of famer goes somewhere else. It's been masking a lot of your ills. I would be stunned if the Buccaneers are with Brady healthy and playing a seven or eight win team only. Well, so let's just see how that, that's why we have these Be debates. That's why Belichick's play playing chess. He, that's why he's going to start cam Newton so he can get Trevor Lawrence next year. He's, he's <laughs> way ahead of the curve. If they're, if they're great or if they're horrible, either way, I think they're going to be an exciting team to watch. Oh, in oh, I'm going to watch every, every week and Kramer Kramer on the no playoffs at plus plus one eighty, but lock me in on the over. And TJ, appreciate you calling in. Make sure you follow TJ on Twitter at 
Bucks sideline guy and check out the Three Dog Thursday podcast and Big Fight Weekend. TJ, appreciate the time, man. Always love being with you dudes anytime. Thank you for all the support with the Sports Gambling Podcast as we rock on and let's let's have a lot of happy locker rooms for the sideline guy to go and talk to with the Bucks. All it. right, fingers crossed. Take it easy, TJ. Kramer, time to talk about DraftKings. Been lo- I've just been loading up one best ball league after another. It's and dangerous. If that if that wasn't, I mean, you should join just for that reason. You should join to get your week one NFL Millie Maker lineup in. They're only five bucks. As if that wasn't another uh, enough for you to join DraftKings. They got 100 million reasons why you should listen up. Mm. DraftKings, the leader in one day fantasy sports, is celebrating the return of sports, giving away $100 million in prizes to all of their customers, including one lucky winner will take home $1 million in cash. Claim your instant giveaway. All you have to do is download the app, sign up using the promo code SGP, then enter the DraftKings free football survivor pool. Love me a survivor pool. And again, $100 million in instant giveaways and uh, put yourself in the running for a $1 million cash prize. Just that easy. All you got to do is go to DraftKings, get that free football survivor pool with it, and uh, you'll get that instant bonus of at least $5 in value upon entering. I got the, uh, I think I got like $25. It's pretty sweet. And while you're in the app, don't forget to check out all the great contests going on. Download the DraftKings app now. Use promo code SGP to claim your share of $100 million in instant giveaways and put yourself in the running for the $1 million cash top prize. That's promo code SGP to get your shares of $100 million in prizes only at DraftKings. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. Joining us on the line, a true friend of the program, a diehard. New Orleans Saints fan and a uh, UAB fan. His handle is Welcome to UAB and Welcome to the Sports Gambling Podcast. Welcome to UAB. How you doing, man? What is up, Kings, Pimps, and Ladies, baby? It's <laughs> who that baby? Who that is the talk with today? I'm I'm doing great, my man. Let's get this started. I mean, to be a fan, not to get off of the National Football League, but to be a fan of UAB suggests that you can only be a diehard, (laughs) as you guys have been through some shit. Uh, But but I think the Saints, you know, that's the other side of the coin. This is a team Mm -hmm. that has the, I think, objectively the most loaded roster in the league. I mean, maybe second to the Eagles, Mm -hmm. right? Maybe second to the Eagles, but. Yeah, maybe loaded, most loaded roster in the league, and it really just comes down to simply: is Drew Brees still on top of the plateau, or has he started to plummet towards the end of his career? Period. Well, that's a really good question. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, Drew Brees was he forty-one now? That's the problem. Uh, He's. I'll start off with last year. I thought it was the you set up perfect season. He's going to get injured early. He's going to be back ready for the playoffs. Boom. We're going to go in and there. What we do, we get our shit kicked in by the freaking Miami Vikings, um, Minnesota Vikings. No one gives a fuck about them. I wasn't even, they were new on my radar at the time, <laughs> but that, that's now, now, now it's a totally different story. We had the Butler. Now we don't, we had Carolina took him away for some dumb ass reason, well, yeah, which I don't think he's going to survive. Well, that's another story, but Drew Brees, he's getting old as shit. He's probably not going to survive the season. And who do we have at the backup? James 30 for 30 Winston. <laughs> and then you have, you What's have, up? You have Taysom Hill as well, kind of sitting on the well, sidelines. I, gimmick. Let's ask that though. Cause, all right, so it look, sounds like you're not in the Taysom Hill corner, but are our okay. are most fa- are Saints fans like pro Taysom Hill? Well, yeah, but uh, there's a lot of things wrong with the state, and we won't get to there with the 50th <laughs> education level. But we, yeah, Taysom Hill. Okay, the good thing about Taysom Hill, and I'll say this as a coaching perspective you have to spend about five to 10 hours a week, just dealing with it. You got to do it with practices. It screws up your timing. Now that's going to shorten things down for your pass off a, a defense to prep even longer. So yeah, it throws a nice little wrinkle and it makes defensive coordinators think about it. But I mean, productive wise game over game, he's, uh, he's not really that big of a factor. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a good bonus for a third string quarterback, but I don't want to see him under center. Yeah. And, and, and it's interesting getting the saints fans perspective on that as well. Uh, Michael Thomas, you guys have, I mean, he's been dominating yeah. lately, especially in fantasy. five targets last year, just Sean. an insane level of targets. And yeah, yeah, Drew Brees maybe has lost a little touch on his deep ball or the willingness to throw the deep ball, but that doesn't seem to stop his connection with Michael Thomas. 
Michael Thomas picked Ooh. up 92 first downs last year, which is Jesus. insane. To put that uh, to kind of give some reference to that, Julio Jones he had 16 more than Julio Jones, who was in second there at uh, 76. So, well, that was also the one kind of weakness they had was they didn't have a number two guy. Uh, Traquan Smith has not stepped up. So what do they do? They go out mm-hmm. and get Mr. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders, the pr- the ultimate, the consummate professional at wide receiver, and and now it it. it it begs the question now, like, how do you stop this? How do you stop this offense? Yeah, and, well, and you, you go ahead. Oh, go and ahead. I was just going to say to kind of tie it all together. You have a veteran quarterback. You have an older quarterback. What do you got to do around him? You got to have a good offensive line. The Saints really seem to have that. Establish the run has them the number one ranked offensive and line. Sean, they have a guy uh, named Anal Zone on their team. <laughs> I wrote that down. Yeah. They and they dominated in a lot in the the Madden oh, they sim were, They were they were stellar in the simulations. What, what could do you go wrong? on the offensive side? Because they look stacked. They got a good offensive line. Yeah, Breeze has his uh, flaws, but they seem to to build an offense around him uh, that works really well. You got Kamara coming out of the backfield. Uh, his his yards after the catch have gone down a little bit, not as efficient as he was rookie year mm-hmm. in 2017, but still three years, all with 81 catches. What's the thing you're most worried about as a Saints fan for this offense? Well, uh, there's a, there's a little bit of things. Well, first of all, Drew Brees going down. That is question number one. Every every sack, I'm gonna I'm gonna be holding my breath because it's just one one of those things. And all these great receivers you were talking about just go down the toilet. So we're if we keep Drew, Drew Brees healthy, that's key number one. Then after that, we're, our our running game's not that spectacular if you think about it. I mean, yes, we're yes, um, Alvin Kamara's still doing great ones, you know, running back ones type of stuff. You know, six and a half, I think, yards per reception coming out of the backfield. But that stuff's dropping. And how much more is it going to dropping once you have you have safety starting to cover him? He's probably going to start dropping a little bit more. And he's not a power running back. He's not that well rounded. You. If you stop his run, uh, his pass game, then he could kind of get a little shaky. Montarius Murray, he was he came in to replace Mark Ingram. He did good. He's got a good success rate on the stats. You start watching the game film. I'm I'm kind of curious how long he can keep that up. Uh, after that, it, I mean, Ty Montgomery's not gonna do shit. He was he, I mean, yeah, he was he was what he was a Jet, which is a shitty ass offensive line. So he's not gonna be able. To, <laughs> he wasn't able to run that. So he, he's he is gonna have a good offensive line. So let's uh, so Ty Murray. Uh, let's see what he does, but. Yes, we have we have Michael Thomas. Yes, there's Emmanuel Sanders, and we have the 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 sim god himself, Jared Cook. It's tied in. That's a pretty. I mean, that's that's almost a Pro Bowl uh, receiving core right there. The the issue is there's only one damn ball. We're we're, we're projecting around thirty three percent. So a third of the passes are going to go to Michael Thomas on the plants or the outs, and you know the quick passes, which he's really good at catching. He gets us our first downs. That's why we're number one in success rate in first downs. It's just we just get that thing up quickly to him. We're good to go. Traquan Smith is he it this is a make or break year for him. If he doesn't show that he can be a slot wide receiver, I, I, I hope he cut his ass. Because he's he has no he has no use for us at this point. Uh, and yeah, and as far as like uh as far as one score games, they were they dominated one score games, so maybe mm-hmm. that regresses a little bit. Seven and one in one score games, three and one in They're field goal plus games. Plus fifteen in turnover differential, which that, that's, yeah. that's, that's always, a tremendous number. That's always a little uh, recovered seventy percent of their fumbles. This was an interesting yep. uh, against the spread a nugget I came across at over at Warren Sharp since two thousand fourteen. Uh, while the Saints are thirty two and twenty two overall at home, they're just twenty two mm-hmm. and thirty against the spread. So I, I think people are kind of, or at least the odds makers, or just the market have been really baking in this home field advantage that maybe isn't quite as strong as it was previous years, where are they at with the fans? And what do you, what do you imagine the home field advantage will be this year in new Orleans? If, if, if they even have one. Yeah. Yeah. Let's actually go back to that. That was kind of a nugget. I'm kind of uh, pissed to Warren kind of list out, but yeah, they're, they do not have a good home record. They do not. And people think they do. So they overinflate their prices. It was a nugget for a while. Just hit their, uh, if they were playing it in the dome, just go ahead and play, play the other team. But it, on the flip side, they were, um, what was it like? Uh, let me look at my notes here. 31 for 17 in away games against the spread. So they're great against away games. Uh, granted, there's like a five game sample size with Jimmy, but they're still it's ever since 2014. So that's the home field advantage. I'm I'm curious to see how they. Well, I really wish we had preseason games this year so I can kind of get a feel of what's going on. But uh, we're gonna have a limited capacity. 
I mean, it's not going to be as loud. So you're, the defense is going to have a disadvantage and everyone's going to hear what Drew Brees is saying, which you kind of already do anyways. So, uh, I mean, you, you have to drop it down to not that good of a home field advantage, but there again, they're probably run to performing it to begin with. So maybe, maybe they can ask the Falcons on how best to pump in a crowd noise for the oh, games. Yeah, there. The piping and sound. <laughs> yes. The beautiful. So we're used to playing with pipe and sound anyway. So we should be fine. Yeah. There you go. I like that. I like that angle. As far as the defensive side of the ball again, like mm-hmm. it doesn't seem like there's a bunch of holes on this roster. Cam no. Jordan, of course, is a beast. Had dream uh, team. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Had dream 83 team? pressures last year. Well, they they're nope. borderline dream team. The difference is it's not a bunch of like mercenary free agents. It's guys yeah. for the most part have been there. Uh, Kiko Alonso is, is a starting linebacker, and uh, I'll never near forget. And dear to your heart. I'll never forget when he was playing on the Eagles, and uh, a frustrated uh, radio caller called into a talk radio station and goes. And this Kiko Alonso, we got a goddamn <laughs> toothpick playing middle linebacker. <laughs> yeah, but uh, well, the, I yep. mean the defense, like the safeties and cornerbacks, you bring in Malcolm Jenkins. Um, yeah, of course, helps. yeah. I mean, yeah. I think they should be strong all around. Well, I think they're just. I think they're still going to be good, but I, I think th- they felt like they were kind of fortunate. Ryan, what did, what did the deep analytics say about last year? No, I mean they were a good team. There there are areas that would suggest suggest regression, but mm-hmm. generally when you have teams that are outliers that win 13 games, they're going to look like a team that might have some regression coming. Uh, I do think one, one nugget to point out is with all of these teams in the NFC South, the schedule is getting tougher this year. They had a relatively easy schedule last year. That's going to get tougher this year. And I think, you know, on some level you have to wonder like, this is, this is maybe that year, that all in year where how many more years do they have? They're kind of dealing with the the end of a, a nice a golden era of draft picks and, and there's a lot of pressure for this team to succeed this year. And when you talk about whether or not they've been the same team against the spread at home that they used to be, objectively they have a home field advantage or at least a greater home field advantage than most teams and I would definitely say greater than most of the teams in their division. And when you take mm-hmm. away that that material advantage, even for just a couple of games, I think it matters. I, I think the fact that Drew Brees, we witnessed him start his plummet, in my opinion. I, I, I do believe now, actually, the analytics would suggest that they will tell you that Drew Brees isn't showing all the indicators of someone who's fallen off the cliff. But the eye test, Sean, we watched it. Yeah. We watched some of those throws. Uh, we watched his inability to be aware of uh, modern day culture this off season. Uh, yeah. We watched, we watched a guy who has to look in the mirror and be like, holy shit. Myself, Sean Payton have won 146 games since 2006. Good for fourth in the NFL. And we only have one goddamn super bowl. Eli's got two fucking super bowls. <laughs> Eli's the king of this fucking town. Now, yeah. Welcome. Dr- to- I, here's that. So I'm going to leave it with that. Like to me, this is, there's not much to analyze here. Other than the roster stacked a lot would have to go wrong for them to be uh, disadvantaged in the talent perspective. It's all about drew Brees, in my opinion. And uh, if you believe he's good, then you are are happy to stand with the the analytics. Uh, they are the number two team uh, w- expected win total, Sean. So mm-hmm. th- this th- this is a team that is projected to be good. I think it's hard to see a version of this team that does bad. Their floor is very high. Yeah. But, well, and, but Drew Brees goes out, and you know maybe Jameis Winston steps into a better situation and he's great. <laughs> or maybe we know exactly what Jameis Winston is and we get to see what the Bucks the Bucks were last year, which is a tremendously talented team that was constantly defeated by their own quarterback. Well, and Jameis yeah. Winston does have new eyes. So maybe he has a new lease on life and How the fuck do you know that he can't? See? How does that happen? <laughs> that is hilarious. He goes, "Oh, I can I can read license plates now." Like, how are you in the NFL not being able I know you're not actually oh, reading the defense, TJ but about that. yeah, his his <laughs> eyes are just. Uh, I mean, that's kind of a crazy stat. But yeah, I mean, welcome to UAB. Where do Saints fans stand with Sean Payton? Do they look at him as like, oh, hey, this guy got us a Super Bowl. Uh, we love him. We're never going to criticize him. Or do they say he only got us one? Yeah. And he, he, you know, he had was involved in that cheating scandal. Whatever happened there, he had to sit down for a bunch of games because of Bounty Gate. Where do where do his Saints fans stand with Sean Payton? Sean Payton. Okay, let's say um, before Sean Payton, how many Super Bowls did we win? One. 
none, bitch. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, Sean Super Bowl. Payton gave us one. He's given us the one only thing. We were happy when we were at eight and eight went to the goddamn playoffs before Sean Payton. <laughs> yeah. I, yes. Let him have sex with my daughter. That's I'll put it right there now. <laughs> now that's Just, a fan. He, he is. He's a. He's a. Uh, yes. He's probably like Joe Pop was for Penn State. Is he gonna? Pro- is he gonna fuck us over? Probably deep down in serious games. Yeah. But hey, he got us to this point where we we can be disappointed. You that's know. True. He, I grew up in the eights, had season tickets where there were like five dollars a damn ticket. Living, the eights. living up in those nose yes, where that was the best part of the game was putting the damn uh, brown paper bag on my head. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so, yeah, he he's fine. He he's welcome he's welcome to the Saints facility by my, as long as he wants to be there. All right. So we'll have to send this sexual audition. We'll we'll have to send this episode over to Sean Payton and uh let him know an opportunity is knocking. He Crazy. does. He does like a fine lipper, Sean. So he, he's exactly. And then maybe that was again. That's Nose a, beers are probably in his repertoire. My theory is that mm-hmm. his uh, dip uh, habit helped cure him from the coronavirus. Just a little. <laughs> again, it's not. It's not proven. It's just a hunch. I'm a gut mm-hmm. handicapper when it comes to making picks and for conquering the pandemic. You can, so. d- you can uh, dip inside a mask too. Yeah. Oh, I've seen it. <laughs> Kramer, let's uh, let's get you it got going. A spit reservoir hanging off the side. <laughs> a little straw. <laughs> it's like a it's like a fucking colonoscopy bag. Yeah. <laughs> All right. For, first four. Tampa at home at Las Vegas. On is that the home open? Is that the Vegas home opener? That is. So that fitting is. for the Saints to be there. Mm-hmm, Green Bay at home week three at Detroit week four. Sean, uh, you know Tampa has. I, I feel like a lot of people are gonna make that hot. Hot, hot take of Tampa has done well in New Orleans to start the season before. Uh, I think uh, the Las Vegas spot's going to be tricky. Uh, I think the Las Vegas spot's going to be a tricky, uh, a tricky game for them. But I still think uh, what three and one, three and one, right? Dome game on the road against Detroit. Uh, but and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like the o, the Saints always start out really slow. Should whether they go two and two? Whether it's zero oh and two, I feel like they've had a number of zero oh and two starts. Even when they're thirteen and three, yeah. I feel like they start out a little rough. I'm Ugh. gonna say I'm gonna say things start off a little slow for them. Even though I I, I don't know where the losses are gonna come, I'm gonna say two and two. UAB, what do you got for them in those first four? I have three and one, but that's not against the spread. It's going to be close, a few close games in there. Uh, I got Tampa Bay as a loss for some weird reason. I'm saying yes. I'm worried about the COVID cuts. I'm, I'm willing. I kind of want to fade Tampa this year too, but so it's kind of two teams that are kind of going at it. But yeah, I'm going with three and one just because Detroit not going to be good. Green Bay is a clusterfuck right now, and I think they're going to squeak the Raiders, which. That's just my opinion. You know what, Sean? I'm going two and two because people are going to be sleeping on my Detroit Lions. <laughs> Chargers okay. on Monday night at home by early bye week. Carolina at home at Chicago at Tampa. Uh, that that's going to be a two game tough road stand road trip. Mm-hmm. The, both those uh, fields known for long grass, Sean. We've we've a- we analyze this every year. Soldier Field and uh, Tampa—they they they, lo- they grow the grass longer. It always gives the Saints trouble. Well, and, and but like UAB pointed out, the the Saints are better than you think outside the dome. What thirty-one seventeen against the spread last mm-hmm. forty-eight. So maybe they maybe they uh, I don't know win some of these and don't cover or or lose outright. I'm gonna be I'm gonna say three and one here. Kramer, what are you doing? I'm doing three and one as well. UAB, what do you got them? Three and one, Dude. four and zero. Oh? Let's see. Let me do the math real quick. Two and two. Oh. I, I got I, I got that win against the Chargers. Um, I got the win against Carolina. Lost against Chicago and lost against Tampa Bay. You know what? He, I'm going two and two. The more I think about it, the more uh, two and two wow. sounds right. Next four: uh, no. San Francisco at home, Atlanta at home, at Denver, at Atlanta. Uh, that's and, and mind you, this at Denver at Atlanta, it's the it's two of a three game road stretch that closes out with Philly. Of course, Philly gets the break of getting a team third road spot in a row. So just something to note there. So San Francisco at home, Atlanta at home, Den- at Denver at Atlanta. Th- that's um. I'm gonna there, go. I'm gonna go two there. and two. I, I I mean the Falcons. I think maybe as a split, those division games are tough, and then. You got the Broncos in elevation at the end of the at end of November, and then 49ers at home. I'll um, go two and two with you, Sean. Two and two, yeah, wow. UAB. Hmm. Uh, I hate to say it, guys, four and zero. Oh. 
All right, no, there, there you go. Is. There's we got a little Homer. We, you zigged and then zagged. <laughs> at, I mean, it, but again, with the Saints team, <laughs> analytics, baby, look it up. <laughs> <laughs> at Philly, at Philly, Kansas City at home. That's going to be an explosive game, yep. Sean. Minnesota at home on Christmas, and then closing the season out at Carolina. So I, I think they close out strong, with the exception of Philly. Give me three and one, Ryan. Oh, uh, you think they they uh, they lose the Philly game and win the rest? Yes. Oh man, I I uh, I want to be conservative here, but I I'm kind of with yeah. I'm gonna go three and one with you, Sean. And so wh- and sorry, that oh yeah, UAB. What do you, what do you got him? All right, that back to back to back, which is funny because they have two back to back situations in this spot. That that's brutal. I'll get, I mean, yeah, most teams are gonna lose it to even a shitty ass team like Philadelphia. <laughs> but so that's a loss right there. My second home, Kansas City. Uh, that's that's a beat down. Uh, they just, I just feel like they can spread them out and just beat them. It's going to be a night. That's going to be a fun game though. Uh, Minnesota. Uh, I think Minnesota takes care of business and then week 17 is probably gonna be a crap shoot, but uh, I'll go with the win. So I got uh, one and three there. Wow. <laughs> just really yeah. a bipolar approach to, to picking wins for your team. So I got them at 10 and we all came to 10 and six. <laughs> oh, no, I think I'm nine and seven, right? I got you at 10 and six, unless I heard you wrong along the way. I think I was. I got you two and two, three and one, two and two, three and one, Sean. Oh, you're right. Okay, ten and six. All Which, right, but yeah, I mean the under like that ten and six. I know it's like a popular thing to throw out as far as the score ten and six, but it really feels right about the Saints team. Like in the regular season, especially having Bridgewater come in, get those games. They won a bunch of close games. It feels like they're still going to be good, but thirteen and three uh, for another another thirteen and three season for them feels a little bit of a reach. So I like the under here. Um, although even at the division at minus one Oh five uh, conference plus 500 super bowl, a thousand, I don't know. I'm not really feeling any of those as far as futures saints minus four fifty to make the playoffs plus 300, not to make the playoffs. I don't know. I, I don't think I'm touching any of those futures. UAB a, any, uh, any futures tempting you? No, no futures. And I'll actually explain some of my, uh, my reasoning behind the wins here is that they did it actually, they added extra playoff spots. So therefore I feel like once they get to a tough stretch at the end of the thing, they're going to kind of fall off a cliff. So, but no, you don't touch the 400. That's ridiculous. The, does anyone know what the fuck Tampa Bay is going to be? I mean, I'm kind of nervous. I wanted to see it happen, but uh, Tampa Bay is a potential threat. Uh, I'd stay away from that as well. I don't feel like there's any value for any futures. I think I think for some reason people are all in on this being like a great division this year because no, there's just no, so much not. there's so much great traditional storyline, right? You have you yeah. have these explosive offenses, you have these quarterbacks with with even Matt Ryan thrown in that mix in that offense. Matty Ice. You you have you have a division that that generally doesn't doesn't have a lot of uh, street cred coming into most seasons. So I feels like people are hyping it up so much that what could possibly go wrong? What could go wrong? Yeah, I'm not. We haven't done them yet, but I'm not as high on the Falcons as uh, the rest of the market. So could I, I, I go think, four unders in this division? I, I think it could be a big fade <laughs> opportunity. Well, yeah, I mean it, it's interesting. Panthers are five and a half. Falcons seven and a half. Saints ten and a half. Nine and a half for the Bucks. But yeah, the Saints being ten and a half in general, I like to fade the super high win total. But I. I I think it'll it'll be interesting what they do in the playoffs, especially yeah. with that seventh seed. I don't think there's any value. I'm not going to lay minus 450 for them to make or minus 400 to make the playoffs. No, that's kind of crazy. But uh, just in general, Sean, I would say like this the the, the divi- this is a division that I, I don't find myself like running to the window for any of these. You know, and, and UAB. Before we let you go, is there a, is there a fantasy sleeper on this uh, Saints team that people should watch out for? Because they're uh, you can make a case for almost any one of their skill players, you know, from Kamara to Breeze to um, you know Thomas, Emmanuel Sanders now, uh, Jared Cook. Is there anyone that jumps out that's like making noise in camp that people might not be thinking about? Uh, depending on how deep, uh, I'd look for that ro- the rookie from Dayton, uh, the tight end, uh, Adam. Shit, whatever his name is, just look up Adam and Dayton. There's only motherfucker alive. They name that. So he, <laughs> he's six five. They're they're talking about him transitioning into a more like a Jimmy Graham. He was a two sport athlete as well. He's he's got a little bit of bulk on. Him. He's a little bit shorter than Jimmy, so I don't know how that's going to work. But let's see what he does on the field. And he, he may just be like a 
just a diamond in the rough kind of situation. Adam Trout. It's a it's a baseball name if yeah. I've ever heard one. Well, Certainly think is. about it this way. You got Jared Cook who's getting old as shit, and he had a great season last year. Probably he did. the best season of his career. Is that yeah, that's probably gonna regress with his old ass. Josh Hill's a speed bump at this point. He's he's never really panned out to what it <laughs> should have been. So there's only one other option, and this offense loves throwing as a tight end. On, and especially red zone pass plays and all that fun stuff. So there should be opportunities. Nice. Love it. Maybe it's shades of a mm-hmm. Ferkser last year, right? Ferkser. Yeah. Adam Troutman, six, five out of date. I'm going to keep my eye on him. Sean, you like a nice tight end, especially when they're young. <laughs> You know, you know me, Ryan. You know me well. UAB, uh, thanks for calling in, man. Appreciate it. Make mm-hmm. sure you give yes, him a sir. follow on Twitter at Welcome to UAB, and uh, have a good night, man. Appreciate it. Who that baby? BetQL. You want to get a sweet, sweet BetQL betting app? You should. Completely free. All you got to do is go to the App Store, Google Play Store, download BetQL. Oh man, it's the only app you'll need to make smart bets this season. NBA, NHL, MLB, all back in action. Time to dominate with BetQL. They got a best bets algorithm. Scans thousands of data points, give you a best bet recommendation for every game, gives you the reasoning behind why you should take the bet. It's pretty easy to use. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, sharp data, where the money's at, all that kind of stuff. Nice. Um, if you're a guy who likes playing the trends, they got a ton of trends listed and then they, they rate their picks from zero to five stars, five stars. Last I checked 67% against the spread cut Chang. And if you want to get their premium subscription, just go to betql.co. Use the promo code SGP 20 for 20% off your subscription. That's betql.co enter code SGP 20 for 20% off your first subscription. Bet smarter, Ryan, not harder. Amen to that. Amen. Now moving on to the Carolina Panthers. Kramer, everyone's everyone's tight hating the Carolina Panthers. Everyone's hating my boy Maddie Rule. Why? Everyone's talking so much shit. <coughs> and we we were just we talked about the Butler a little bit. Teddy Bridgewater, of course, the big acquisition for the Carolina Panthers in the offseason. Besides new head coach Matt Rule. Bit of money they're throwing at that. Bridgewater, who uh I, I was trying to think, like, I always kind of like Bridgewater. What is it? Bridgewater has led his teams to a 31 and nine against the spread record, mm. 78%. Oh my God. That's what it is. Yeah. And uh, he was 25 and 15 straight up in those games as well. Filled uh, in for the saints last year at a nice little run gambling. Sean, I, I had a, I had a feeling you might come out strong backing Teddy Bridgewater, the Butler, his gloves and Matt rules, new system. Just wanted to share something with you. What do you got? The football outsiders created a stat called Alex yes. named after Alex Smith. Yep. You're aware of this is it's essentially measuring where you're throwing the ball on third down compared to the line of scrimmage third and fourth down. There are three people who qualify with over a thousand throws and have a negative value. Alex Smith himself. Oh, come on, come on, Ryan. Him. He just, he, ba- he almost lost his leg. Teddy Bridgewater. <laughs> And Sam Bradford. Oh my God, this guy's in the well. But Bridgewater's ability to cover spreads separates him from Sam Bradford. And and meanwhile, Sam Bradford, he barely played. Alex Smith almost lost his goddamn leg. He's like he's strapping his chin strap, ready to go. So yeah, certainly that is a concern. But certainly the the hype is real. The Bridgewater hype train going to give you a chance, Ryan. Cause I know you're bringing Wait, a lot of on, negativity into this Panthers. You, just let me, let me, let me drop a little writer nugget here okay, from some beat okay. reporters. I like Quote, this Bridgewater makes throws that look as good as any Carolina Ooh. Panthers quarterback <laughs> has made in their relatively short history. He has yeah. developed a particular chemistry with both Christian McCaffrey and DJ Moore. like that. What more do you need to hear? Ryan love DJ Moore in fantasy. Uh, I, I like Teddy Bridgewater. I like the fact that he's being paired up with someone he's familiar with, with from his time uh, with the Saints, right? Yes. Am I mistaken that Brady from LSU now running the offense? Joe Burrow's offensive coordinator. I believe there's an overlap with Teddy Bridgewater somewhere in the careers. A- anyway, the point being, uh, there's reasons. W- y- there's reasons for you to say, hey, this offense could be decent, and and I'm I'm fine with that. I, I I think Teddy Bridgewater is the ultimate high floor, low ceiling option at quarterback. 
And in a season where you're not going to have a normal off season, it's probably a good thing. It's probably a good thing that there's some familiarity there. Now, the problem is they're turning over eight guys on defense. That so is huge. They're turning over the entire defense. It's very young. I would say this though, their entire defense really sucked last year. Time to yeah. bring in some new guys. Agree. And who is better to rally around some new guys restarting a program than Matt Rule? Like you saw it when he went to Temple, you saw it when he went to Baylor. Young yep. guys buy what this guy is saying. And I yep. think that right away he knows year one. I think for a guy like Matt Rule, a guy who who's a proven track record as a head coach that knows how to connect to young people, that that knows what they respond to, the kind of coaching they respond he, to, and he that does they don't. seem like a CEO. Yeah, and again, there's a lot of like random bad shit that happened to the Carolina Panthers. I mean, they were down to their third string quarterback. Of course, I I nailed it. I said Cam Newton is not finishing this season. Yep. One of my lead pipe locks. They were two and six in one score games, zero oh and two in field goal games, and a minus fourteen turnover margin. Here, here's what I would say to that defensive thing. I still don't think the defense is going to be good, but no. I think they're going to get better because they were like 31st, 30th in in so they had many the metrics. Fifth worst rush defense DVOA ever. Yeah. So ever. I think it's I think it's one of those things where like they almost can't get worse, and by just like the way the NFL works out, they're going to get a little bit better. I think they I think they would creep into the top 25. Defensive DVOA. Are they, they going to be? They good? literally no. took. They they used every draft pick they had on defense. I love it. So, I love it. I mean, Go all in. And Christian McCaffrey. I know it from betting against Christian McCaffrey. From saying Christian McCaffrey sucks. That dude. I'm sorry. Do you mean Christian McCaffrey's? Yeah, Christian McCaffrey's. That guy is a. He's one of those guys that's going to randomly put the team on his back. We don't see yep. it very often in the league right now, especially at the running back position. But Christian McCaffrey is going to win one or two games. And the fact that the entire betting public is as bet this number down from six and a half down to five and a half, crossing the key win number of six, and that's a metric I just invented, but it sounds pretty legit. So, what do you have to say about uh, the ultimate cryptocurrency spy mo- maneuver? Okay. Russell Okun getting his way to Charlotte, one of the banking epicenters, one of the mainstream Bank banking of America is there. He's going to flip them. Uh, Bank Bit- of America and Wells Fargo essentially are headquartered there. Wh- Bitcoin wh- had a bit of a rally, got over to twelve thousand. It's dipped down to eleven three right now. But Russell Kuhn, he's all is he he's there to in. play football or is he there to figure out what's going on in mainstream banking? Well, he, he, he what's did, his priority? He Sean? did try to get paid in Bitcoin, which is I don't know, just somehow telling an NFL team I'd I'd prefer to be paid in Bitcoin and just watching their heads explode as they try to figure out what Bitcoin is. My point is. I just don't think they're going to be horrible. That that's where I'm coming at with this Panthers team. Are they going to be good? Are they going to be a playoff team? No, I don't see that. But I I think I think I mean that Panthers team as bad as it was last year with the defense and everything and with no real like reputable, uh, you know, I was all in on uh my boy Will Grier and, and Kyle Allen. Kyle Allen actually had like a decent yards per attempt. God, he's so stupid. He doesn't even know it's Will Greer. <laughs> um I'm having fun, guys. What I what I'm saying Wait, can you is, explain that joke one more time. <laughs> what I'm saying is that I think uh, I think this team is gonna be respectable, like seven and nine, eight and eight. I think is in the realm of possibility for this Panthers team. I mean, serious question because I've not seen really any news for or against. But is is the Matt Rule system? being bought into. I know it's it's early and it's a year one thing, so probably everyone's excited. The beat reporters in in Carolina probably are of the sort where they're not trying to like they're not trying to attack the team at any given time, so they're probably fanboys. Yeah. So I'm guessing there isn't anything, but like there there is that element of yes, they do have a very young team uh and, and very young coordinators. Uh, so is, is that working? Is that working? Because Matt Rule, by all accounts, great motivator of college kids. Is he a motivator of men? We know he's a motivator of the great Robbie Anderson, and we I'm surprised we got this deep into the preview <laughs> without bringing him up. But the former Temple player reunited with his head coach, and, and uh, perhaps where he learned how to face fuck <laughs> officers in the. Uh, no, he said he was going to have sex with the officer's oh, wife sorry. and then nut in her eye. So oh. just I just want to make less sure disrespectful. Just want to make sure we don't uh, mince his words. Facebook's pretty direct and to the point. Fun, um, Here's he, speaking of Robbie Anderson, and he was in my notes, Ryan. Of course, because we mention it every time. But I think <laughs> Robbie Anderson 
Uh, he could be a, an interesting DFS play. Yeah. He's on no one's radar. I think there could be a couple games where he has a couple big games. One of the Panthers camp observations: defense dominating almost everyone. Dot dot dot. Except Robbie Anderson and and Teddy Bridgewater actually has a decent deep ball. The systems and schemes he's been in, they haven't really let him unleash his deep ball. They want to play him conservative, close to the vest as a game manager. If Rule and 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 uh, Joe Brady come in here and like open things up and let him unleash the deep ball a little bit, I wouldn't be surprised if defenses shade DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson has some. Like, I don't think he's going to have a huge year, but I think he could have a couple huge games where you're talking like 20 fantasy points. I think he's the ultimate like late round best ball receiver yeah, because definitely. of that upside. I think I think you know if you want to even go deeper, the the even less talked about guy Curtis Samuel, similar profile. I think both guys can burn. I, I do have quite. I mean, I think the 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 sheer volume to still have a negative Alex. I, I think it's important to focus on that because we saw it last year with new Orleans. He didn't, he wasn't willing to throw the ball down the field. And so, well, and, and, and again, is that Teddy Bridgewater who he is as a quarterback or was that the situation in new Orleans where you have a really good defense, you have skilled players like Alvin but Kamara. It's, it's been his whole career is my point. And yes, the, the, sorry, earlier Brady, Brady and uh, Bridgewater did overlap for a season in new Orleans. Uh, but yeah, perhaps because the offense we watched in LSU and, and you know, was not as much like the one we saw with the saints, a little bit more dink and dunk cha, cha, cha as the Danta base would call it. <laughs> uh, so I do wonder if you can use like, yes, they're good to decoy the defense and stretch the defense, but you have to have a quarterback that's willing to take the shots. You have to after quarterback that has the, the arm talent to do so. And while Teddy Bridgewater has a fine arm, he doesn't have the strongest arm. And while Teddy Bridgewater is a fine quarterback, he's not a risk taker. So I'm excited to see. It's part of the reason I love DJ Moore in fantasy. Uh, it's part of the reason why I stole the super flex mock draft by taking Christian McCaffrey number three overall, <laughs> like a genius that I am. Uh, but I think no, I'm not as sour on this Carolina team as as you think. Uh, but they have a tremendously difficult schedule. They are clearly the worst team in their division, and I think them losing for them going zero and six in their division is on the table. And so when you add in the divisions that they have to face outside of their uh, outside of their division, which is what the AFC West and the NFC, uh, the NFC West, that's just difficult. That's going to be, a, it's, or I'm sorry, the NFC North, that's going to be a tough go of it for, for a team that is, is going to be young. Uh, they do have a new head coach. Granted, he shouldn't be on the hot seat at all this year. And, and I would think he's getting the full, the full uh, NFL leash. So this is a, a, a building year. Um, the other side of that coin is that then I think your narrative is they're just a little too good to suck enough to get the good quarterback. So they're in a weird spot because it's clearly a rebuild. When you spend your entire draft capital on defense, you're rebuilding anyway. Yeah, sh- definitely we, in rebuilding mode. Should we go through? But but are they rebuilding? Enough? Should we go through the schedule, Sean? Sure. And just one more other nugget: Ian Thomas. Mm. He seems to be the guy in Carolina as far as the tight end. And Bridgewater, you know, if a guy not you're saying he's not going to be airing it out, Ian Thomas could be a PPR machine. And his ADP, his average draft position is one seventy seven. Mm. So if you're looking to like just kind of punt on the tight end position, he's a guy you can get if you're going to not get like an Ertz, a Kelsey. Um, honestly, the strategy. You know, I guess George Kittle. Then and you just want to do a late round guy who's going to be probably a reliable starter and has like a has a chance to like rack up some PPR catches. Ian Thomas might not be a bad play. And the reason you like Carolina's offense, regardless, to me, I, I think even if Bridgewater is too conservative and they don't stretch the ball down the field, Ian Thomas, DJ Moore, Christian McCaffrey, these guys are still going to be hyper productive. Because the defense is going to suck, the defense is not going to be good right away. They're going to give up points. This offense is going to be on the field a lot, and I think any version of it, I I, I think you can find yourself talking about how yeah, do I why waste a pick on a tight end when I can take the last tight end in the draft and take Ian Thomas, who is no competition for his spot, and we saw him tear it up in the Sims last night. Yeah. So the, you, we know the Sims are very close to reality. Sean first four Las Vegas at home at 
Tampa Bay at Los Angeles to take on the Chargers and the Cardinals at home. Oh, geez. They have some winnable games here. Yeah. Right? Like this is this is the optimist in you. All right. So West Coast road trip, probably that that's a tough one. Going to Tampa, Tom Brady, uh, they're not winning that game, right? I'll say I'll say two and two. But could they shock the world and beat the Raiders? Week yeah. one, could they beat the Cardinals coming we east? We got to get our shit going mentally. In the long grass of Carolina, absolutely. I'll say I'll I'll, I'll be nice. I'll say one and three. Uh, How nice of you, Ryan? Well, I mean, I'm I'm being a little bit. Re- Are you saying three and one? No, I said two and two. Okay, just checking. Next four at Atlanta, Chicago at home, at New Orleans, Atlanta at home on the short week. Uh, that that's a you can pencil that game in as one they could potentially uh, do something that Thursday night game, but the other games here uh, they're not winning in Atlanta. They're not winning against the Khalil Mack defense, uh, rookie qu- or against Bridgewater. They're not winning at New Orleans. I'll say one and three again. One and three makes sense. Next four at Kansas City, Tampa at home, Detroit at home, at Minnesota. Another tough stretch. I'll say one and three again. I'll say two and two. By week, see, I hate that they got late. This by week, week is not good for a, a rookie head coach because it, if like six, seven games in, if shit's going wonky, you want the bye week. Then you can readjust. Uh, late by week isn't good for a young team. I mean, at least they have a long week to prepare for Kansas City, Denver at Can. Uh, I'm sorry, Denver at Green Bay at Washington, New Orleans at home. Mm. I mean, the New Orleans game might not matter. Uh, I think we have it mattering. I'm gonna go one and three again. Two and two. Love it. What do I got? I'm going seven and nine. You're an animal. Seven and nine. Love I it. Four Lock and it up. Four and twelve. Four and twelve. Wow. Yeah. And the and the win total uh, is five and a half. It was it was seven and a half last year, but they they you know Cam Newton got hurt. Sham Newton five and a half this year minus one thirty five on the over plus one hundred five on the under. Twenty to one to win the division. Um, Probably shouldn't even discuss that. Sixty to one to win the conference, one hundred twenty-five to one to win the Super Bowl. Look, Carolina Panthers to make the playoffs plus five twenty-five. Am I crazy for throwing that out there, Ryan? Well, I think the version. So we 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 discussed this high floor, not a tremendously high ceiling for Teddy Bridgewater, but the version is. That they have a uh, a very solid, efficient offense, maybe maybe at uh, right around that ten to twelve range, and then the defense balls out completely and is like above average, but has a massive turnover, a plus turnover advantage, and uh, this team is just somehow winning games, close games they shouldn't, and and they go. Yep, I'm they gonna go, do it. They go seven and nine. Throw me a little uh, make playoffs at plus five twenty five, just because everyone's hating on this team. Isn't this win total too high though? Six and five and a half. How is that You're too high? You're telling me they got to win six because I just listened to you go like, I, like have an out of body experience <laughs> picking them and and getting them to seven win. I mean. Yeah, I, I don't see. I got them going four and twelve. I don't see the two wins on the roster. This this is the best bet in the division for me, Ryan. So you you're you're going all under on the NFC South so far. <laughs> will we will we see a change of pace when we talk about the Falcons coming up next? But before we get to that, I want to shout out our pals over at Ace Per Head. Ever thought about starting your own sports book? Perfect time to fire up the sports book. NBA playoffs, NFL regular season, college football. It's all happening. NHL, MLB. Instead of trying to just beat your, the bookie, why not become a bookie over at aceperhead.com slash SGP? Use that sign up link and you get up to six weeks free. Plus, Aceperhead offers live betting and an amazing mobile experience. They got top notch customer support going 24 7. Some of the sharpest lines in the industry. They'll provide you with an all inclusive professional betting site with all the lines updated to the second. Wagers graded immediately. They got it all. Over at aceperhead.com slash SGP. That's aceperhead.com slash SGP for up to six weeks free of your own sportsbook betting software. Closing it out with the Atlanta Falcons. Falcons coming off a seven to nine season, started out one and seven, then things unraveled. Their win total was eight and a half. They went under that. New win total is seven and a half over minus 120, under minus 110. 
Kramer, what are your thoughts on this Atlanta Falcons team? Yeah, I mean, I think that's the story. If you're a Falcons fan, you're just talking about how you close the season four and zero, including a win over the 49ers. Period. Yeah, you have a coach who seems to have rallied the troops. You seem to have a defensive coordinator who has righted the ship, and you have arguably the most explosive offense in the division. You could argue that what we're going to see with Calvin Ridley, uh, you know, now maturing into a potential one B receiver to Julio, uh, Hayden Hurst, who maybe he gets unlocked a- as a true receiving threat in this system, and maybe Gurley, as I'm seeing, re- being reported as we're recording this, Sean, 15 to 25 touches a That's game. That's bullshit. If things fall right and the defense is, you know, is corrected. There's no reason this team can't compete for this division. And I think that's the the only angle I really have overall in the South this year is they all are playing a tougher schedule. They have some of the toughest schedules, projected schedules according to DVOA. Yeah, Falcons in the projected to play the toughest schedule in the NFL this season. See, I have the Panthers projected one, Falcons two, but same, you know, six of one, half dozen of another, Sean. Well, and, and to me, the the Falcons team is the one we saw that went one and seven, like that's that Falcons team. It when in that one and seven stretch, thirty second and third down conversion percentage, thirty yep. second in takeaways, thirty second in red zone defense. They they obviously righted the ship in that second half. But to me, I, I think that was less who they were than just kind of like, all right, you can't be that bad. They're at least kind of decent. But seven and schedule nine, got easier in that second half stretch. To your to your point, yeah. uh, they did play easier teams. Uh, so. Very, very. It, it's fair to say. Well, if, if you're going to buy into that regression, you know, hold that because it's better to look at the entire season. And when you look at when you zoom out to the entire season, this isn't a team that was particularly good, and this isn't a team that you really have much area for extreme excitement around. Other than they, I keep coming back to this point of Dan Quinn. Somehow, it, it seems like objectively he has the locker room. Well, it, and that matters with professional these professional uh, athletes, especially in the National Football League. When it comes to like every year when the team wins the Super Bowl, it's generally because the team really gelled and they believe in their coach. There was something that happened and they bought into their coach. Like with the exception of Belichick, who's just a douchebag, right? Like even Coughlin, it was like Coughlin opened up and his players saw that he had a heart and they played together. I, I think that happens more than it doesn't, and and there's clearly something about Dan Quinn. That is endearing to his players. Well, and I, I think, but I, I think this is just the end of the road. I mean, I keep that mentioning could be the case too. I keep mentioning, it, but when he put names in a hat to decide who is going to coach what part of the team, and they just drew names like that to me is like a guy who just says fuck it. I mean, it, it's not a guy that exactly I, that I have faith in for for kind of figuring it out this season. And they're they're off the off season just doesn't make sense. Like. The Ravens love throwing to the tight end. It's a huge part of their game. They invested a high pick in Hayden yeah. Hurst. Why are they getting rid of Hayden? Because they have too many players. Yeah, but come on, you can't. If you're a good team, you can't have too many good players. I, I, I just don't buy that. I don't think Hayden Hurst is going to be that good. And replacing uh, Todd Gurley for Devonta Freeman is this? Isn't this the definition of a lateral move? Like. Gurley has that noticeable limp. I mean, Devonta Freeman was what uh, three point eight? Or no, sorry, they were both. Devonta Freeman was three point six yards per attempt. Gurley was three point eight. I mean, Gurley had that more touchdowns, but I don't think he was necessarily a better player. Yeah, so, and, and don't be mistaken that I'm arguing why the Falcons are going to be a great team. I see all the reasons why. They, I mean, the reasons they're great is because they they're going to have a dynamic passing attack. But for the same, we literally are are talking about the same thing with all of these teams. Matt Ryan is also dangerously close to the cliff, in my opinion. And I think with Matt Ryan, it, it, because he's a little bit more towards mediocre than breeze and Brady, when he falls, those guys fall even faster. And so with this division, we're talking about a guy who ranks in the same breath as Alex Smith and Sam Bradford at a statistic and three guys who could have fall could be falling off the cliff. He's well, the youngest guy though. And that's where like, I come back to, they could end up with the most explosive offense and they could end up with a serviceable defense because Dan Quinn is a rah, rah guy. And somehow they believe in him and everything kind of falls into place. And this is a team that is when you're looking down the barrel of that schedule, 
could this be a team that's a game out of the division, two games out of the division down the stretch? And now with the seventh playoff spot, will they be competing for a spot? I do believe that this is a team that can compete for a 500 record. And so they will, they will be in contention again. I, I think for, for this entire division though, I'm, I'm relatively depressed on their wins just because the overall schedule got tougher. Yeah. And again, I think if you're making a case for the Falcons, continuity is what you sell yourself on. Dan Quinn's been here. Uh, you know, Matt Ryan's been here. Julio Jones, a lot of their big pieces yeah. have been playing in the same system. But to me, yeah, I, Raheem I don't know. Morris. I mean, that's another one. Like, do you do you believe this guy has something? I I don't know. Like, again, like they made changes that worked, and you have to decide: Are you buying into the change being the reason, or just the randomness of the NFL calendar? Yeah, and I, I don't know. I'm just not feeling it. I mean, it, regardless of where you stand on PFF, Matt Ryan lowest PFF grade of his career since or since 2009. And that kind of that kind of jives with the eye test on Matt Ryan. But like, you could say the same thing about Breeze and Brady. Like they all kind of had their worst years in a while last year, and that's why yeah. the question is: Are these guys are these guys operating, uh, uh, you know, uh, on sixty percent? And we might see some really bad performances, uh, which is why I was we led off with, "Hey, this division is being hyped up as the clear best division in football." And all I'm saying is the lead course are like not so fast. Well, and and I think the difference with Matt Ryan is we've seen Breeze and Brady uh, perform at a super high level over a bunch of years. Where Matt Ryan was one has, year has been good, but 2016, oh my God, yeah. he's an MVP. Yeah. But we he's not gotten back close to that that sort of uh, magic and that he had there. How different is the story that we're talking about right now if they don't blow that 28 to three lead? I mean, I, I'm not joking here. If they win that Super Bowl against the Patriots, and he finishes, then he has the same number of Super Bowls as Drew Brees in his division. Yeah, like, don't you think he could make a case for Hall of Fame? Because you, you're going to look at his numbers and you're like, oh yeah, the numbers are pretty good. He has an MVP and a Super Bowl trophy. Like, that's usually, and he probably would have been Super Bowl MVP. Like, that. I mean, that usually is enough to get you in if you have a if you're a Super Bowl winning quarterback with a regular season MVP and you have pretty solid numbers, that's usually punching your ticket in. Yeah. Now he's, he's kind of almost in Donovan McNabb land where it's like, okay, he's got one super bowl loss. McNabb never had the regular season MVP, but similar, like, you know, I, high I enjoy, productivity, I'm enjoying this, uh, this McNabb analogy, <laughs> well, high productivity without like dominating yeah. uh, necessarily. And you could make, you can make a case that Donovan almost had a higher ceiling at times. Sounds like drew Brees. I mean, but Drew Brees, I would say, is slightly, hey everybody, slightly Jim like one here, here. Drew Brees has SGPN. been great at winning games Let that don't ride. really matter. So that's that's how you sum up his career. All right, Sean, should we? Should, is there anyone to talk about notable from a, a player acquisition other than Todd Gurley? Hayden Hurst we already talked about the, uh, the fantasy guys. Uh, Dante Fowler. I mean, that's that's the guy. That's one of the guys you circle if you're like, hey, this pass rush is going to be better, which means the, the defense as a whole is going to be better. Same with that Buchanan, and then uh, losses. Basically, a shitload of the defense, right? They got rid yeah. of guys that were just not productive. So. Big Beasley Jr., Desmond Trufant, um, Austin Hooper. Here's what I'll say. Here's my piece on Austin Hooper and why I like him in Cleveland. He's an every down tight end. He was on the field for like 95, 97 percent of their. Well, snaps. and they're probably going to run more twelve personnel or just. But they might end. miss that. I mean, Matt Ryan was a safety blanket Hooper guy. And when you, when I'm I'm down on Hayden Hurst. I, I just, I, I, I think, I think I, you're off on this one, Sean. I think we're going to, I think there's a chance that we end the season and Hayden Hurst is like one of the top five, top 10 tight ends in fantasy because of the fact that Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley are on his team and he's going to be the that, third maybe, option. Th that's certainly a possibility, but I, I think it's just and like a red flag lo flowing locks. You know, <laughs> it's just a red flag to me that a team who loves the yeah, tight end, that's true. You can't get enough of, I yeah. mean, tight ends in Baltimore. And, yeah, and they get rid of them. So, Kramer, let's walk through the schedule. First four: Seattle at Dallas. Definitely going to be fans there. Chicago at home at Green Bay on Monday night. The road games are tough here. The home games aren't any easier. Uh, we've discussed this. Like Dan Quinn, very easily first coach fired. Right? He's been on the hottest seat for a while. This isn't the way you want to start the season, right? They got history. One and there. three. They're going to beat the Cowboys. <laughs> Can can he can they survive? Can they survive a slow start? 
I mean, they went one and seven last year and then went six and two. So I'm sure that's what, if you're a Falcons fan or if you're, if you're Dan Quinn, that's what you're telling management, Arthur blank though. He's, he's doing all right. Home Depot's dominating right now in the stock market. So he's probably feeling pretty good. Uh, I, you said one and three, I'm going to, I'm going to be slightly more optimistic with a two and two Carolina at Minnesota, Detroit at Carolina on Thursday night. I think getting these two Carolina games is key. And I think, I think that this is going to be the, their season. If they, if they can't win these two games, this is not a good team. Uh, I am going to say two and two. Yeah, I'll say two and two as well. I mean, the fact that they but isn't that the benchmark? Like they gotta be they gotta go two and zero against Carolina, or they're just they're just not a good team this year. Next four, ten or Denver at home. Then we have the bye week at New Orleans, the Raiders at home, and then New Orleans at home. Wow, they they a lot of quick turnaround with these divisional games. I don't know how much I like that. Uh, they li- listen to this. They play Carolina twice before they play anyone else. They then play New Orleans twice, and then they play Atlanta twice later. That's that's a crazy sequencing. I'm gonna say one and three. I'm just out on this Falcons team. I think it's gonna get bad. But but no matter how bad it is, they're gonna beat the Saints at home. Like that. That's the way this it's division true. works. Uh, there's a lot of that beat up each other. I'm gonna go two and two again. Last four at Chargers. Sorry, you went one and three at Chargers. Tampa at home at Kansas city at Tampa Bay. This is a brutal stretch. This is where I go one and three. I'll go one and three again. I, I think they're just, I, I think that one and seven is what they're like. All right. You, you have them going five and 11. I got them going seven and nine. So we're both under Ryan. So, you're officially well, here's what I'll say. I'll say, uh, shit. I got to pick. How do I take <sighs> Man, I don't know how I got to think about it. Which team I take the over on? <laughs> Cuz I'm I'm literally a ha- uh I would say this about the Falcons. I think there's enough reasons why things could go bad for a number of these teams to at least examine the plus 650 on the division. To me like from a value proposition. That that would be something I would look towards. You know what, Sean? Bump me up to eight and eight on the Falcons. Okay. Bump me up to eight and eight on the Falcons, and uh, I'll say they sh- they shock they they get they they shock someone on the road, and it could be Tampa with Tom Brady already done for the season. Uh, yeah, I mean, my bold prediction would be that I think the Bucks Brady gets hurt. Wow, um, calling for an injury. Ryan. So uh, I would say dabble on the plus six fifty for the Falcons. Uh, I'll take the over on the win total there. You're going to make me do it for the, for the two. Are we doing uh, overall plays here? Yep. I would say, you what know, are your locks in this division, Ryan? You're I, locking I, up Falcons. I don't want to fade the saints. I think that was, that's a reckless maneuver. The roster's so good. Jameis Winston could come in and, be, and the team could be in just fine hands. Uh, so if you're going to, if you're going to make me, uh, it's the bucks Brady. F- this whole thing is, is the fucking bullshit. It's all about Belichick. I mean, in a way, I would love to see that. It, w- it, it he's really putting a lot of faith in himself still being good because it, think about what people get to say if this team burns, right? And and, and Sean, it's 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 alarming when you compare the second halves that Brady and Winston had. It, they were very identical. And while Winston's was much more high variance, like people noticing all these picks and shit. Uh, I think if I'm, I'm if I'm picking a team, give me Bucks miss the playoffs. Bucks go under the win total, completely falls apart, and then, and then I'll, I'll take I'll take the Saints as an, or I'm sorry, the Falcons as an over, uh, with, you know, my super super long shot would be let's let's put a small play on the uh, on the Falcons to win the division at plus six fifty over at mybookie.ag promo code SGP. Uh, my two locks. Give me the under on the Falcons win. Mm, Wins dangerous, Sean. They're not. They're not a 500 team this year. Panthers over. Matty Rule gets them to at least six. And if you're gambling, man, <laughs> you're playing with fire, bro. I mean, come on. We got to throw a couple oh, hot takes in here, Ryan. I mean, the hot take is that Br- Brady career career ends this. I, I just it's come well, on. He's 43. I don't know. Maybe it's a hot take. But the Panthers to make the playoffs plus five twenty five. That's my long shot future play. I like that. It, it 
I'm just, I'm just sucker for Matt rule. As seven, a coach. Hey, seven teams get in they're, They, they only have to be above average. Yeah. They're eight and eight. And I think they're a classic team. We always see one of these teams sneak in that has a lot of wins. Cause people aren't even like preparing for them. They're looking past them. Well, again, and if the other teams in their division, if breeze falls off the cliff, sure. Maybe Winston's good enough. Maybe not, but the bucks and the Falcons, if Brady goes away, like TJ mentioned, it's Bl- it's the Blaine Gabbert show. Yeah, I don't know how that goes. And if 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 Matt Ryan poof, uh, g- God help that team. You know Dan Quinn's getting fired. That whole thing is getting blown the fuck up. So yeah, and uh, that's and the story for the Panthers is they somehow get to the second spot in the division, and they're the seventh best team. And it's a great story. And I, fuck I, Matt Rule. All I, rise, I, I, I Joe think, Judge, baby. I think they're gonna surprise some people. That's what I'm feeling right there. Okay. Make sure you sign up for the pre roll football contest. Trying yep. to give away five thousand dollars. We need the sign up, so spread the word. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash contest. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash contest. And if you got a minute, uh, take our free survey. Uh, not that you would charge for a survey, but uh, our listener survey, so we can, you know, we're trying to open up, listen to DJ Nation, see what you guys want in the podcast, podcast network. And uh, we'll pick one person who fills out the survey. We'll give them five hundred bucks. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash survey. And yep. again, AFC East and then NFC East. Then we got a fantasy football preview, an official preview. We'll do a college football preview. We're counting it down to football happens. Football is here, and it's, I'm going to go home and watch Hard Knocks. It's going to be amazing. Oh, Thank I you can't for wait. Participating in the sports love, gambling love podcast. T- I love the tues- Tuesday night recording, edit, watch Hard Knocks. Pass it's, out on the couch. It's the it's the football is here trifecta for the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green, and he is Ryan. Highly, highly encourage you to tell a friend because we're I think we're putting out seven podcasts over the next two weeks. Oh my god. Kramer, let it ride.